All right, going to take a minute here to answer a letter from Malaysia. I don't get very many letters from Malaysia, so it's nice to hear from you. Um, I got it, and uh, the donation and everything else, so thank you very much for that. Um, going to read this letter here, and then I'm going to answer it. Dear Brother Brian, I hope all is well with you and your family. May the Lord always keep you and your family safe and healthy. I would like to thank you and your ministry for preaching the Word of God from the King James Version. Um, before I discovered your YouTube channel, I already followed the teaching of dispensationalism by Dr. Ruckman, so I already had pretty good understanding of sound doctrine. However, I was still confused about the Trinity doctrine. Thank God I found your channel, and it really opened my understanding of what Godhead means and the implications of such doctrine, which is the soul of Jesus is God the Father, the Spirit of Jesus is Holy Spirit, and the body of Jesus is the flesh of God the Father. Exactly. It's very well put. You explained this doctrine in a clear manner, and all your arguments were supported by scriptures. Now I have no doubt that Trinity is wicked doctrine and reject it. Praise the Lord. Um, I have been blessed by your ministry, so thank you so much for sharing this truth. Uh, then he gets into the donation, which I won't go into that. Um, some of the bills were a little stained, and uh, so that's fine. You can't turn them in in your country and Things, uh, most countries aren't going to be you know, accepting dollars anymore, I'm sure, American dollars, as the American dollar is crashing right now. I think it's, I just heard the other day, it's, it's lost something like 90% of its purchasing power, the American dollar, since when it first came out. But let's, we're going to print more of it, and that'll help. You know? <laughs> We've lost 90% of the, of the purchasing power of the dollar. I know what we'll do. Let's make more. That's always helped throughout history, you know. Forget hyperinflation, yeah. Um, brother, please mention in one of your videos if you receive this donation. Appreciate it very much. I have. Um, I have some questions. If you have a chance to answer these questions in one of your videos, that would be great in helping my understanding of the Word of God. Question number one. I heard many times pastors, preachers mentioning that Jesus is 100% man and 100% God. After understanding Godhead, I believe this is wrong teaching. Jesus was not 100% man when he was on earth 2,000 years ago. According to Acts chapter 20, verse 28, Jesus' blood is God the Father's blood, so it is sinless, unlike man's blood. Exactly. Also Romans 8, 3. God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh. Jesus' Jesus's flesh is not the same as man's flesh, which is sinful. Scripture says, in the likeness. Okay? So it's not, so it's not the same. Uh, so I don't buy the statement of 100% and 100% God anymore. He is definitely 100% God. Please correct me if I am wrong. No, you're not wrong. You're exactly correct. Whenever you see statements, Jesus is 100% man, fully God and fully man, you know, or they'll even use the H word there, human, uh, not even understanding what that comes from. There's no word human in the Bible. Um, it's a modern politically correct term, so you don't offend a bunch of liberal devils. Uh, no, human is not the right word. It's mankind. Okay? But uh, Jesus is 100% man and 100% God. Fully man, fully God. Chapter and verse. Book, chapter and verse. Excuse me. Um, book, chapter and verse, please. Where does it say 100% man, 100% God? It doesn't. Fully man, fully God. It doesn't. Okay, then reject it. What you've done, and you summed it up perfectly. Um, he was not fully man. That's nonsense. He took on a body of flesh in the likeness of sinful flesh. It was flesh that felt pain and was corruptible in the sense of it would get older and it would, you know, die. But it was not sinful flesh like what we have. That's why when he was born, he was born of a virgin. So there's no, well, you know, she's already had multiple children. No, no. He had to be born of a virgin and his father was not a man. So that the sinful blood did not come from a father. See, the blood that came there that was in the body of Jesus Christ is God the Father. God is his Father, the soul of the Godhead. So you have it exactly correct. Question number two, in Genesis 15, verse 6, Scripture says, He counted it to him for righteousness. This is speaking of Abraham. When Abraham believed what God told him, he received righteousness. Apostle Paul also mentioned in Romans 4, 3 about Abraham's Imputation of righteousness. My question is, did Abraham receive God's righteousness or man's righteousness? 
I know from Scripture in Romans 3.22, born-again believer in this church age is imputed with God's righteousness. Romans 4.22-24. In the Old Testament during the law, that's a problem. You just I'll get back to that here in a minute. You kind of answer it in the next question too. Um, in the Old Testament during the law, the general rule was that Old Testament saints received maintained man's righteousness by following the law because God's righteousness was not available yet. Romans 10 verses 3 through 6. If Abraham received God's righteousness, why didn't he go to heaven when he died, but he went to Abraham's bosom? My understanding is if you have God's righteousness, then you can go to heaven. But maybe I am wrong on this as Enoch was caught up by God as the picture of the church being caught up, raptured, and during Enoch's time, God's righteousness was not available either. Okay? Yeah. And what we're dealing with there is before the law. Okay? There's a situation there by grace through faith is basically how they were saved back before the giving of the law. All right? Understand that. Now, it's not the same exact thing as what we have today because we have the gospel today. They did not have the gospel back then. Christ's perfect blood that he shed can wash away all of our sins today. They didn't have it. But what they did is God would tell them to do something by faith and they would do it. Abraham was justified by faith. Okay? It was before the giving of the law. So it's very similar to what we have today. So that was one little error that you made there that I have to say. Okay, that's where your confusion comes in at. Back there they were under the law. No, Abraham was not under the law. He was before the law. Question number three. This kind of ties into it. Romans 5 verse 13 for until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. What happened to people who lived before the law of Moses? They were justified by grace through faith. Grace has always been there. Okay, but you can't say that man was always saved by grace in the sense of um, that's all it was. It's always just God's grace that saves somebody. No, grace through faith right now. You can't just, God just doesn't have grace for people and they don't need any faith. No, the just shall live by faith. Okay, that's there. Grace, you know, faith plugs into grace, as I did in my one video about that. Um, without God's grace, nobody can get saved. Absolutely. But that grace has different things attached to it at different times and different dispensations. Um, there's no faith in the millennial kingdom. But will grace be there? Well, sure. Grace is always there. But there's no faith because Jesus Christ will be physically on the earth during that thousand year reign. You can't have faith. He's right over there in Jerusalem. There's no faith needed. Okay, just to use that as an example. Um, in Romans 2 verses 12 through 15, it seems that people who lived without the law uh, were judged by their conscience whether they followed their conscience or not. These people, when they didn't follow their conscience, did they sin? It seems yes according to verse 12, but Romans 5.13 says, sin is not imputed when there is no law. So what was salvation, what did salvation look like before the law of Moses or for people who never hear the law of Moses? Um, well, in the Old Testament, like I said, before the giving of the law, then it was grace through faith. So I believe back then people were judged according to their faith in God. God having grace for somebody that he sees, there's, you know, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Was Noah saved? Well, did he believe in Jesus Christ, his death, burial, and resurrection? No. <laughs> Why? It didn't happen yet. Well, he was saved by looking forward to the cross. There's not one verse of Scripture that proves that. We can look back now and we can see pictures of the cross throughout the Old Testament, but nobody believed in that to be saved in the Old Testament. Those were types and things like that. Uh, that's one of the ways that these non-dispensational Catholics will come after people and whatever else. They'll tell you that they were saved by looking forward to the cross. It's nonsense, absolute nonsense. Um, they would have been saved in the Old Testament before the giving of the law, before all the different sacrifices that needed to be done for certain sins. Um, they would have been saved by grace through faith. So you have somebody back then and they're saying, hey, this is wrong. I don't know what's going on here. You know, Noah. Who told Noah? You know, don't intermarry with these, you know, fallen angels and things, strange flesh and whatever else, the sons of God back in there. Genesis chapter 6. Don't intermarry with him and, and be a preacher of righteousness. Who told him that? Did he have a Bible walking around? No, he didn't have the Word of God. Well, what was the deal? See? Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And the Lord said, okay, hey, Noah, build an ark. There's a flood coming. I'm going to wipe all these people out. 
And what was Noah moved by? Faith. You see? So there were people back then before the giving of the law that they had, they found grace in God's sight and God would say, okay, I'm going to give you a task to do or some other thing to do here to prove that you have faith. It wasn't just some bl blind thing of, I'm not, you know, I don't have to do anything or whatever else. Hey, Abraham, take your son, your only son, Isaac, that I promised would be a great nation, you know. We made that covenant together. Um, go on over there and sacrifice him. Abraham just didn't just go, oh, okay, I believe by faith that you'll, you know, preserve him. Good. All right. Yeah. Oh, hey, I'm justified by faith. No, he had to say, come on, son, let's go over. Puts him up on the altar. I bet that was the hardest thing. You know, you think about that and he puts his son, I have a son, you know, and I think about putting my son on the altar and I take the knife and I go, Oh man, I'd be I'd be bawling. I'd be crying and just God, you better do something here. <laughs> I don't want to kill my son. This is terrible. I can't believe this. Picture of what would happen in the future. So but that's my answer to that. Number four, question number four, Exodus chapter six, verse twelve. Moses spoke of himself, whom of uncircumcised lips. Exodus four twenty four through twenty six as comparison was Moses circumcised. Verse 24, the Lord sought to kill somebody who is who is him in this verse. Um, let's go there real quick. Uh, Exodus chapter 6, verse 12. Back to the Old Testament. Exodus chapter 6 and verse 12. And Moses befo spake before the Lord, saying, Behold, the children of Israel have not hearkened unto me. How then shall Pharaoh hear me? who am of uncircumcised lips. Okay. Um, and the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron and gave them a charge unto the children of Israel and unto Pharaoh king of Egypt to bring the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. Okay. Now go to Exodus chapter 4. Four verse 24 through 26. And it came to pass by the way in the inn that the Lord met him and sought to kill him. Then Zipporah took a sharp stone and cut off the foreskin of her son and cast it at his feet and said, Surely, surely a bloody husband art thou to me. So he let him go and sh then she said, A bloody husband thou art because of the circumcision. Well, she circumcised the child. Um, but I believe that he was circumcised there. Um, but, you know, that is a good question. Whom of uncircumcised lips there? Um, verse 26. And it came to pass, verse 24, and it came to pass by the way in the end that the Lord met him and sought to kill him. Um, Hmm. <laughs> Good question. Uh, I don't know. Give me your thoughts on the comments. Anybody else else out there? Uh, how that whole thing works out? I do believe that um, it was his son there that was circumcised. Uh, so maybe Lord was going to kill him, the son, and Zipporah took a sharp stone and cut off the foreskin of her son and cast it at the feet. There. Um, I don't know. Again, I'd have to do some study. I'm just trying to answer this quickly. Uh, you know, when was Moses circumcised or whatever else? How was he circumcised? Um, but yeah, very good question. Let, let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments, everybody else out there. Um, I haven't really done the study on this thing, to be honest with you. But uh, I read through the letter once and I thought, yeah, that's an interesting question. So, but... Um, I would say that, you know, perhaps Moses was not circumcised at the point where he's saying about going and speaking to, to Pharaoh, I'm of uncircumcised, you know, I'm not circumcised yet. Oh, or it could have been a spiritual thing there as well that he was talking about. I don't know. Um, but to finish up the verse here, but I think Exodus 4, verses 24 through 26 there, I think it's talking about his son in context. The Lord is going to kill him, meaning the son and his wife Zipporah cut off the foreskin and cast it at Moses' feet. 
there. That's what I would say to that. That's all my questions are. I know you are busy, so please only respond when you have a chance. Thank you again for your ministry. May the Lord Jesus Christ bless you and your family. Well, thank you. Appreciate that very much. Um, it's good to hear from people. I like you know, reading letters. I can't respond to all of them. Um, over the years, this has turned into a, a major thing. I have so many letters. Um, just here in the last couple of days, um, there's three more letters there, you know, one, two, three, like that. There's this letter. So we get a lot of letters. And uh, actually, there's two more. Just looking at that. Another one, little one, and another one right there. So this is just this last couple of days. Uh, like I said, we get a lot of people writing to us. And, uh, oh, <laughs> and another one. I just saw that. Um, so, yeah, um, thank you for your encouraging, kind words and everything else. I really do appreciate that to everybody out there and for uh, donating to the ministry to keep us going. It takes time. It, it does. Uh, I would love to be able to just fellowship with people and just write back and forth with people, but I can't. Uh, I mean, Right now, we still have, you know, we're, we're doing a project where our lane is getting so badly rutted out and we're uh, basically, you know, cutting trees down and, and we have an old chipper shredder that we got years ago, many years ago, and uh, we're running, you know, little small saplings and trees through that to try to make mulch so we can fill in some of the ruts on the lane. I mean, stone's not that expensive, I get it, but, you know, just we're trying to do things. We always do things to cut corners, always do things to, to be live as cheaply as possible. I've never sought to be a burden on the body of Christ and buy some huge big building and have a mortgage and whatever else, that you know, some church or whatever, and I have to get people to send in their 10% tithe and all that. You, you'll never find another ministry like this. And I'm not saying that, you know, I'm sorry I have to speak foolishly for a minute, but, uh, you know, when the Lord called me into the ministry, I knew it was going to have to be very different um, because I was sick and tired and fed up with all these church building people and whatever so but uh so that's going to be it thank you again for the letter thank you for the donation hopefully i've answered your questions but everybody else out there what do you think about this thing of when was moses circumcised i didn't have time to look that up when he said about i'm of uncircumcised lips that would be my main thing there i think exodus chapter 4 was talking about his son you know God was saying, I'm going to kill him and his wife. Said, okay, fine, I'll just circumcise him. Here you go. You know, you're a bloody man to me, you know, she says to Moses. Um, I think that that's what was going on there. So, um, again, let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Hit the thumbs up. Share the video. That's great when you can do that, whenever you can do that with any of my videos. Please feel free to just publish the videos. Get them out there. Um, I'm the guy that, you know, you want to put a, a preacher out there to fight against the liberals and whatever else. Well... You know I won't compromise. Um, I won't take it easy on them. Uh, so that's what I ask. Please help the ministry to, to grow um, because YouTube's not going to allow it. <laughs> They're not going to, you know, allow me to have the right kind of subscribers. And people post their comments, you know, they get deleted from my channel all the time. And um, they've suppressed me for years. So we need to do it ourselves. Okay. I mean, obviously God is the one that will promote a ministry. I get it, but what I'm saying in this modern world, help me get the truth out. Don't just sit there, watch the video, and just say, okay, I don't need to push thumbs up or share it with other people or send it around or whatever else. Um, write little tracks, put, you know, Born Again Barbarian on YouTube on it or KingJamesVideoMinistries.com or whatever else. We need to have the kind of the grassroots way of getting the truth out um, because the algorithms are very much against me, and I've been shadow banned for pretty much the entire time. I think they created some of the shadow banning stuff just to mess with my channel uh, and a few others, but, uh, you know. So that is going to be it, and we'll see you in the next video.